Within AWS IAM, we can actually configure identity providers and federation. And what this means is we can configure within IAM the ability to have our users come from another identity source. So rather than creating users in IAM, we might have users that are in Active Directory. Now we might also use social providers, and this is more for mobile applications. Now, when we're talking about a directory service such as AD, we're using something called SAML. And when we're looking at these social providers, we're using what's called OpenID Connect. And that's also known as Web Identity Federation. Now, AWS mostly recommend that you use AWS Cognito for this use case, but you can also configure this through IAM as well. So in short, what we're talking about is having our identities, so our user accounts in another service that are able to then log on and have permissions to AWS resources. And so this is done using SAML 2.0 and you can connect to any SAML 2.0 compatible LDAP source. In this case, it's Active Directory, but it could be some other LDAP database. So LDAP, if you don't know, it stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Active Directory is built off of LDAP. LDAP is what you use to be able to query the information in Active Directory. And there are other similar databases out there that do very much the same thing. So once users are authenticated and authorized, they can then access AWS services. So that's the key thing is you want your users from Active Directory to be able to authenticate to AWS. You don't want to have to create another account for them in IAM. So let's have a look at a bit more data about web identity providers and federation. So with an identity provider, you can manage your user identities outside of AWS and give these external user identities permissions to use resources in your account. So an example is that your organization already has its own identity system, such as Microsoft Active Directory, or you're creating a mobile app or web application that requires access to AWS resources. When you use an IAM identity provider, you then don't have to create a custom signing code or manage your own user identities. The identity provider does that for you. And external users sign in then through a well-known IDP, such as login with Amazon, Facebook, or Google, and you can give those external identities permissions to use AWS resources in your account. Using identity providers helps to keep your AWS account secure because you don't have to distribute or embed long-term security credentials, such as access keys in your application. And from a customer's perspective, from a, an organization that's using AWS, it's also an additional security because they only have to create their identities in one place, which means they manage their identities in one place. They only have one set of usernames and passwords to manage. So to create an IDP, you create the IAM identity provider entity to establish a trust relationship between your AWS account and the IDP. And IAM supports IDPs that are compatible with OpenID Connect or SAML 2.0. So that's it for the theory. I'm just going to take you into the AWS Management Console and we're going to see how you would configure an identity provider. I'm in the AWS Management Console in Identity and Access Management. If you just come down to Identity Providers and here you can create a provider and then you choose the type. So SAML would be then your Active Directory and you've got to give it a name and you need a metadata document. Now we're not gonna create any of this. I don't have an Active Directory to configure here. Um, it wouldn't prove an awful lot anyway. I suppose I could show you how users could then authenticate to an AWS service, but it's probably more than you need to know. Really, you just need to understand what an identity provider is, what the options are that are available. So the other option is OpenID Connect. And in this case, you have a provider URL and an audience. So that's it. Just remember, this is another option you know, we've got AWS single sign-on, we've got the AWS directory service. These are all different options for how you can configure where your identities are and how they're able to authenticate either in a sort of single sign-on way or just by being able to allow your users on-premise to authenticate into a single AWS account. So there's a few different tricks that you need to understand and you need to understand for the exam which one you would use in a specific scenario.
So I would say remember that for mobile applications, when you want to add sign in and sign up configuration for a mobile application, typically you're going to go with AWS Cognito. You're not going to use the IAM identity provider. Now, if all you need to do is to authenticate your users from on-premise into a single AWS account, that's something where you could use this. So you would use the SAML and you would configure the source as the Active Directory of the organization. And that will enable users of that Active Directory to then be able to have permissions assigned to them to access AWS resources. And then if you are going to give access to multiple accounts, you might use AWS single sign-on instead. And AWS directory service is something we're gonna cover in another lesson. There's quite a lot to learn there. So I'll leave that one for now.